be in the house of the Lord tonight, isn't it? Yes, it is. Amen. The good news for us in Matthew 19 or 18, 20, Jesus said himself, For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there That's I am right. in the midst. Amen. So although we may not have a big crowd tonight, we know we got Jesus. Amen. Amen. Right. Right. So before I begin, I'd like everybody to bow your head. I'd like to pray over the word first. All right. So if you will, bow your heads. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time you've given us, Father, to come again and worship you in spirit and in truth, that your words come through my mouth and not be my own, but yours, that the scripture go forth, not go void, and that we all get a brand new revelation of who you are in a greater sense. And I just ask it and pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. So tonight... We will begin in the book of Romans. I have entitled this message, What Does It Mean to Be a True Christian? All right. So where better to start than Romans Road? All right. Yes. So Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, Romans 10, 9, 10. That if thou confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So I want to extend on that a little bit. All right. It's by our faith in God. Well, Romans 10 also goes on to say in verse 17, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. That's right. So in that verse alone, if you want to put it in this term, our relationship with God is based upon his word. How right. long we divulge in it, we get to know him in a greater sense. Because basically, we're holding metaphorical Jesus in the palm of our hands. All right. Because he said... The Word became flesh, dwelt among men. So Jesus, the Word, became flesh. All right. Just a little point there to mention. Uh -huh. The next book I'd like to go to is Ephesians 2, verse 10. We'll go 8 through 10. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are created in his workmanship, in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So again, for by grace ye are saved through faith. All right. So a big key to being a Christian here is faith. Amen. Amen. Right. And we all know as Christians, faith is the essence of things not seen. Uh -huh. So we could be going through the worst circumstance in life, yet be able to keep that smile on our face and tell tell everybody, so how's your day going? Oh, I'm blessed and highly favored. We yeah. could be have a bad illness, we could be we just lost our job. Uh -huh. I mean, we all have those seasons. Yeah. And that's what they are in life. They are seasons. Yes, they are. Amen. They do pass. Yes. Amen. That's right. I was going through a rough season myself with the whole job loss and losing the house, having to go back with mom and dad. But God always makes a greater return in yes, the end. Yes, all right. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I can tell you that right now. We have a, a better house coming about. The right. wedding date's set. I got a great job going. All right. And it's only thanks to God. That's right. Because there's no other means that it should be by. Yeah. And who else would I rather offer anything than the Father himself? Yes, amen. And then I'd like to go to James 4, 7. Because we're talking about what does it mean to be a true Christian. We're human. We all struggle with, technically, how you want to call our 
We have our own deceptions. We have our own demons we deal with, as people call it. Verse 7 says, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Basically in that verse it's saying, He always offers a way out. Yes, he yes. does. We have temptations Amen. that will come. Yeah. Amen. But there is a way out. Yeah. And I will tell you, it's through your relationship with God how you will handle those matters. Amen. The less you know and the less you've experienced with God, the harder it will be for you to resist the devil. Because he's the only one that gives you the strength. For this is our sword. So if we're not equipped with our sword and the full armor of God, then how do we face our adversary? Yes. And... You don't see it a lot anymore because it's condemned upon in society. But we're, we're supposed to be ministering outside the church walls as well. Yes, I mean. Now it's everybody's hush hush. Oh, if I say that, I'm going to get fired. Or, oh, this is going to happen. This is going to transpire. We have to realize on the day, but in front of God, I want to be able to say, hey, I stood for you, Jesus. Yeah. No matter what it took. That's right. I'd be a martyr for you if I had to. Amen. Yeah. But that's the thing. You don't see people in that light anymore that are that have such a fire for God uh -huh. that they would just like to just get down on their knees yeah. and just pray to Him hours on end and just be in His presence and miss them and miss themselves in that. Yeah. Be able to be in true immersion, learn who God is and His and what all he's done. Not just in the natural sense that we see, but in the spiritual realm of things. Right. For in the spiritual realm of things where it manifests first. When we pray, we should already believe that we've received what we prayed for. For that's the whole position of faith. Yeah. What's the point of praying if we don't believe what we're saying? Amen. Uh -huh. I mean, are we just spouting words, hoping they're bouncing off the ceiling, going to hit us back in the face? Hmm. I mean, honestly, if well, we're praying to God, why would we, just saying, why? Would we be able to go to our friends, to our parents, something like that, and say, hey, um, you want to hang out? Or, hey, can you get this for me? Why can't we do that to God? Yeah. He's right here with us. Yeah. I find times all the time I'll be driving in the truck. I'll cut off the radio and I'll start talking to God about my day. That's right. Because he's as real as me and you are. Yeah, that's right. right there beside us. Yeah. Amen. And there's no limitation on what you can and cannot talk to him about. He right. wants to hear what's going on. He knows our needs. But he right. likes us to reiterate, to kind of show our relationship. I mean, a father, he knows our needs. Right. But he does like the children to give him time. Amen. If you don't give devotion, give some sort of time, then you don't have much of a relationship. Right. We get Amen. caught up in the cares of this world. Yes, we do. But in all sense... We need to get back to the fire. Get to yes. where it all began, where right. people were getting in their prayer closets, getting hungry for God. Yes. When at night, people would just go in their prayer closets before they went to bed. Didn't matter if they'd be up early the next morning or not. They would pray hours and hours on end. And guess what? They had strength from the Lord. It's not, one of, I don't remember the preacher's name, but one preacher I heard before, he says, I cannot face everything I'll go through in that day unless I pray at least three hours. All right. For I have given true devotion to God, and I have allowed him to reveal things and equip me in my spirit for what's to come. All right. Think of how much we could be a light to this world if we got in our prayer closets yes. and began to be that light. Amen. We're Amen. blending in in the world nowadays where... You, dark and dark, they don't mix. Right. We're bumping into each other in the dark. Uh -huh. I said so in my last sermon. But in the light, you got to think of it this way. In the dark, the light. There's a huge difference. Yeah. And they should be able to see that and be like, what's going on with him? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe I need to figure out what's going on. Who, who's this Jesus character you keep talking about? Uh -huh. I mean, it's sad that there's people who don't know about Jesus in our own hey, man, society. Right. It's not just foreign countries. It's our own society. Because, I mean, it's sad. But there's atheists even in our academy. Okay. And if they don't want their kids exposed to certain things, they can keep them away from it. Same as Christian parents. If they don't want their kids exposed to certain things, they'll keep them away from it. Just think, it goes both ways. 
Yes. So if we're not the light, then they'll never get the exposure that they need. What if you were the only person that they would come in contact with that could have been the light to them? I mean, you got to think of it this way. God, it, it blows my mind when I think of it this way. If God was putting you as the judge for a second to help you understand what he did, all right, so you have a son and daughter. Now choose which one you want to go to heaven and which one you want to go to hell. Think about that. Jesus didn't pause. He's just like, I'll send me. I'll be the spotless lamb so that they can have everlasting life with me. Yet we, we spit in his face. We don't give him time. We don't give him any relationship. Uh -huh. We should be the light. We should be growing in God. Amen. I mean, as Christians, we're supposed to be Christ-like. We're supposed to be followers of Christ. Yes. How can you be followers of Christ when you don't have a relationship with the Father? Come on. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's sad to see. This world's in bad shape. And a lot of it's because the, the church, I hate to say it, the church is back down. They yeah. don't want to be the church. They want to be in their little confined building, and that's where church is. They don't realize they are the body of Christ. Yes. Not in a building, just everywhere in the world. Yeah. So if you're a true Christian, just a, a good point of view to bring across, we're being the light. Yes, we all fall to raw struggle. None of us are perfect. Right. But through the goodness and grace of God, I mean, for it's the goodness of God that brings men to repentance. Right. Why bring all this condemnation on people? I mean, you got to think. These people that live are homeless or on drugs. You bring condemnation upon them. Why do they want to have any part of Jesus? Jesus didn't condemn the sinners. He came to save them. The righteousness of God brought men to repentance. Right. Not him condemning them. Oh, you know you're going to hell. <laughs> uh, you're fun. No. And that's sad. That's our world's mentality. I've heard it with myself. I've heard people say, when they get to hell, they're going to throw a party. And yeah. it just broke my heart to hear that. Mm -hmm. That they don't even know what leverage their words carry. That's right. For again, getting a little deep here, but our words have power. Yes, our positive have. words and our negative words all have power. Yes, our positive have. words that line with the word of God, the angels of the Lord are waiting to carry them out. But the negative words of light are adversaries waiting. See, what can I do? You have to think. What little power the enemy has, God gave him. So why do we fear the devil when we're above him? He's already been defeated. Yes, yes. yes. amen. Jesus went to hell and took the keys to death yes. and the grave and defeated the devil. Amen. So why do we keep wandering around, oh, the devil's on my back this week? No, he's not. We should be above him. Amen. Jesus already put him in the ground. Amen. He only has a short time and he knows it's coming to an end. Yeah. That's why everything like this has happened. That's right. But soon, just think, if we all got in our prayer closets, yeah. just a little bit of us right here, yeah. and we got on our face before God and we started a little routine, an hour, two hours a day, yeah. I guarantee you, you'd want to build that routine because you can't get enough of God. That's right. You want to just dive into his word, hold metaphorical Jesus in your hands, get locked in your prayer closet, and if you could, never come out. Because the presence of God, oh, there's no greater feeling. Amen. I mean, I myself, I can't understand how anybody makes it without Jesus. That's right. It's just... It's sad to see that even our, this generation that's growing up, quote unquote, my generation, a lot of them's godless. That's true. That's true. Very much so. But if we are able to be the light, maybe we can be the change. And our generation won't be the godless generation, but be remembered as the yeah. generation that brought Christ back to this nation. Yeah. yeah. Right. For we have a president trying to. Yeah. However, President can only do so much. Yes, he's the head over the place, but one voice begins the rise. As many voices come, 
We can make those lights shine so bright that they'll not want anything than to be a part of Jesus. Right. So although this is a short, sweet message, just know, as Christians, people are watching. Yes, they are. We're always supposed to be alive. We will falter because we're human. Yes. The only person that was perfect was Jesus. Yes. But we're supposed to try to strive as close to perfection as we can. Yes. Amen. And that's only by the grace of God. That's right. Amen. That's right. So I'll finish up by saying this. Just as you go through the rest of the week, think about your mannerisms a little more carefully. Think. Could I have, have I encountered people who I could have been the light to, but I'm so busy in my blinder vision that I'm just going through the motions, that I'm missing these people over here, yeah. that they are the ones that need Jesus. Yes, they are. What if you could have been the one that could have saved their life? I mean, you got all these people going through depression and the, the cutting and everything else. And all they need to hear is that Jesus loves them. Yes, amen. And get that relationship with God. Yes. Because you'll never have a reason to kill yourself or anything like that if you're with Jesus. Right. So let's yeah. all be the lights and let's develop our relationships with God. Amen. amen. Praise the Lord. That's good. That's good.